All right, so welcome to this walkthrough for bulk importing your grace cart orders into QuickBooks Online. Um, this is made possible through an app called Excel Transactions. So if you found it's important to have your grace cart sale information inside of QuickBooks, and if you're manually um, transferring that data right now, um, what I'm about to show you is going to save you a lot of time from that manual transfer. Uh, so this is what we would refer to as a third-party integration, meaning that there's not a direct link between Gracecart and QuickBooks. We have to use this app called Excel Transactions that was developed by SASAMP. And I believe their pricing starts out at $10 a month. Um, so there's no affiliation between Gracecart and SASAMP. That's just their, their minimum plan. Um, but this makes the process for getting our data into QuickBooks very simple. The way it works is you just need to get your order information from Gracecart onto an Excel or CSV file um, in a certain format. Um, and then once you upload that file to Excel transactions, they will then map it into a transaction inside of your QuickBooks account. So either a sales receipt or an invoice, whichever one you need. Um, and the thing that has made this really easy is that we have built an export function in Gracecart that already has your data formatted um, the way that QuickBooks would need. So I'll show you what I mean, but first let's just go ahead and I'll show you how to download the app. Uh, the easiest way I think to do it is directly from your QuickBooks account. So once you're logged in, you just want to head down here to the bottom left column and click on Apps and search for um, Excel Transactions. Yep, right there. Excel Transactions Importer and Deleter. Uh, click that. You'll hit Get App Now, and I think you just put in some login information, and it takes you from there. Once you have the app downloaded, you just go over here to My Apps and scroll down to Excel and hit launch. So that'll open up the um, my Excel transactions account and I'll already be logged in. All right, so right away here is where we would um, upload that CSV file I was referring to. And in order to get that, we'll log into our Gracecart account, which I have pulled up on another tab here. And you'll just want to filter your orders, head to your orders and filter whatever set of orders that you need to export. I already have my filter made. And if we click on this check mark here and check the ones we want, click the export button. And here you can decide which format you want your CSV file to export in. So if you want it to, the data to be formatted for a QuickBooks sales receipt or an invoice. And again, a sales receipt would be a transaction that we already have a payment for. So commonly this would be an order that you know you took a credit card or debit card payment. Um, and if you took a cash or check payment that you need to receive the payment you know, against an invoice, you would wanna go ahead and use uh, the invoice function here, which is my case. I wanna import all of these orders as invoices into QuickBooks. So I'll just click that and it automatically sends the file to my downloads. Let's, let's take a quick peek at the file. So again, what um, Excel Transactions is doing is it's taken all of our order data here and we have it, uh, everything separated in different columns here with a header name. And Transaction um, or the exporter is basically taking this information from each column and mapping it to a field inside of QuickBooks. So we're going to map this shipping address field to the shipping address field on an invoice in QuickBooks. So um, let's head back to my app here that we're logged into. And you can either drag and drop the file or just go ahead and search for it here in your downloads. This is the one I need. Okay, click continue. Here's where we'll, we'll um, decide on our transaction type that we want to import. Again, we have a lot of options, um, but in my case, I'm importing invoices. And in this section, this is how we decide how we want um, the data from our CSV file to map to a field in QuickBooks. So that's what this center column is here, the QuickBooks Online attribute. So this is going to be right here. This is our invoice number field in QuickBooks. Um, and we are mapping that uh, to the invoice number field on our Excel file, or CSV file rather, which again is going to be our grace cart order number. Um, and if you want to review or preview kind of how these QuickBooks fields look, um, just to refresh your memory, 
click on that button here and you'll see that you have a blank invoice pulled up with a title for every single field. So that way it can kind of help refresh you as you're trying to map these. The cool thing is that, again, we have the CSV file already formatted in a way that if you just leave it on this auto default mapping, it's going to automatically pull those columns from the CSV file and map them to the most appropriate field in QuickBooks. But of course, if you do have a case where you want to make a change, um, you can go ahead and choose a different field in QuickBooks for any single one um, of those columns. Now, there are two important fields that um, I want to draw your attention to because this is a little subjective depending on how you um, use QuickBooks. The first is going to be the deposit field, which is down right here. So you're going to want to decide where you want these transactions to deposit to or even if you want them to deposit right away. So by default, they're not going to deposit anywhere um, since this is an invoice. Um, so that way we can receive a payment against it later. Um, but if you wanted to send these straight to a bank account or maybe to your undeposited funds, you can go ahead and use this default field right here to override whatever information we have on the Excel file. So right now we don't have a column on the Excel file for this, so it would just not deposit these transactions. But if you want them to deposit somewhere like a bank account, you would put your bank account name in here, or you would just type in undeposited funds um, if you wanted to send them there instead. The second thing we want to pay close attention to is how Excel Transactions decides to match our products in Gracecart with our products in QuickBooks Online. And the way this is set up by default is that it's going to match um, the product name from QuickBooks with the product name from Gracecart. And anytime that QuickBooks can't find an identical match for the file that you're importing, it'll just go ahead and create a new product entirely, um, which is nice. And it'll do the same thing for customers. So if you have a first time customer that's not set up in QuickBooks yet, um, when we go ahead and import that order, it'll just automatically create the customer for us. But on the product side of things, um, if you find that in Gracecart, the product names change from time to time, maybe you change it for a different marketing reason. So if there's a variance there and if you have hundreds of products, um, that might be common for you. It might be more reliable to have QuickBooks use your SKU field in Gracecart to identify products because your SKU is going to be less likely to change. You know, at Seven Suns, we have hundreds of products. We'll change the names slightly from time to time. Um, and we don't want QuickBooks to think it's a new product and just create something new. Um, so what we do is we just change these settings here for product and service. I would change this field in QuickBooks to just be a blank field. That way it's not mapping to anything for product and service. And I would have that map instead to the SKU field, which you see this is the SKU field here on my CSV file that's importing from Gracecart. So I'd have that map to the product and service name in QuickBooks because that's what QuickBooks is using to identify products. Now, again, if you don't, if you're not familiar with SKU systems or if you don't have your setup yet, you can leave it on the default settings and everything's going to be a OK. But anytime you make a change to the way these default, you know, mapping preferences are set up, you can go ahead and save your um, the new mapping preference that you want. That way you can use it again later and you don't have to change it every single time. And all right, at this point, I'm happy with the way it looks. You can go ahead and click this review button if you kind of get a, a brief preview for how this information is going to map. Um, so again, here we have the invoice number in QuickBooks and you can kind of see from our file what information it's pulling for that. It's just pulling uh, the order number inside of a grace card. So, and if you need to make, again, if you need to make any itemized changes on this, so maybe just for a certain line or a certain order, you need to change a field, you can manually do so here. But again, I'm happy with how this looks, so I'll just click upload. And from here, you can monitor the progress. Uh, typically, this will take anywhere from um, a few seconds to 10 minutes or more, depending on the amount of orders that you're importing and your internet speed. Um, I'm gonna just click pause for this process. Okay, so that took me just under a minute or so. I had about 10 orders, but there were large orders with a lot of data on there. Um, so now let's look at what this looks like inside of QuickBooks. I'm gonna head back to that tab, hit refresh, 
and see if everything went through okay. So I go to my recent transactions. Let's click on one of these here that imported. And that all looks good. So you can kind of see here again how this information will import. Of course, you can, again, make changes to the mapping. So like, for instance, we have our sales channel um, field from Gray's Cart matching to the class in QuickBooks because that's how we track it and it, it's helpful to do it that way. But if, you, if you're using classes for some other reason, of course, you don't have to have the sales channel um, mapped to here. And over here, you can see that our SKU field is populating the product name. Again, that's just because SKUs are less likely um, to change and they're more reliable than actually importing the product name. Uh, so I really like the way this look. The last tip I want to show you is that, you know, kind of to help you keep track of the orders that you're exporting from Gray's cart and the ones that still need exported. I would come back here to this group that I have and I would tag these as exported. That way, anytime I want to filter a new group, I can always just filter as orders that had, do not include this exported tag. That way, there's, there's little chance of me ever importing the same orders twice. Um, but other than that, that, that is pretty much the rundown. There is um, Excel Importer does have a brief explanation video for their system because this tool can be used for other things. We're using it just to import data from Gray's Cart, but you can also use it to um, delete, bulk delete information from QuickBooks. So if you have, you know, maybe duplicate transactions or something, you can go ahead and use this tool to try and delete information. Um, you can export information from QuickBooks, modify information as well. So there's, there's, it's a pretty powerful tool and there's more that goes into it. So I'll include a link that they have to their explainer video um, to the description on my YouTube post here or the blog post. But other than that, that's all the details. I hope to see you in a video.